Hello and welcome to Shabby Pug Yarn Podcast. This is a knitting podcast uh, with me, Emma. Uh, I am the host and then I have the co-host, Ali Foyt, who loves to give kisses. And over here is the bulldog, Frank. So yeah, those are my knitting companions. And uh, right now they are having like a cozy... I don't know, cozy licking their faces section, but they will probably lay down very soon. So yeah, this is uh, a knitting podcast. Uh, and I'm trying to get back to recording every week. Now that, sorry, <laughs> now that my new computer seems to work, I figured uh, in the last episode that the colors looked better when I transferred it to my uh, big computer or my I have a laptop and I have one huge stationary computer uh, so I record on the laptop since I don't have any web camera or anything good for the the big computer as I named it and so yeah and the colors look uh, a lot better there, so I hope it will do the same this time. Uh, with this little cinnamon bun wiggling along. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to get back to record every week, and hopefully the dogs will be more quiet this time than uh, last time. Uh, I don't have so much to talk about, so it will be a bit of a short episode. Since uh, Easter uh, is coming up, I, the, the, this week have been like really crazy. Uh, because my work closes for a whole week and we have lots of things to do, of course. So I have been working and being really tired in the evenings, so not so much knitting have been done. And I have been like enchanted by all the new shiny things so uh, I haven't done like much progress on uh, on one thing I've been hitting a little bit on several different things so maybe I should start with showing you how uh, much progress I have been doing uh, in my awesome bird leg bags uh, large bag. I have uh, my fiance's fort sweater which I showed you in my last episode. I have knitted uh, like an inch since you saw it last so not a lot of progress. I accidentally uh, broke the needles when trying it on. Uh, sorry they are playing uh, so yeah, I broke the needles when I was trying it on uh, on my fiancé, so, but I super glued them together and it works fine. Uh, I have an extra pair if needed. So this is uh, the pattern Fort by Brooklyn Tweed. I heard Flood and the yarn is Brooklyn Tweed. Uh, it's from their BT men's collection, I believe. Uh, so. Hopefully I will have some more time knitting on this this coming week. I haven't mentioned it, but it's uh, Sunday today and my shawl <laughs> doesn't seem to want to stay today. Um, it's Sunday, I forgot to tell you. So hopefully I will have some time during the next week since I will be at home chilling out. So yeah, uh, this is the smallest size. By the way, so I haven't done much, uh, but I really enjoy the knitting. Hey, Frank. Uh, so yeah, I really love this bag. It's so gorgeous with the skeleton and the hands tooth or checkered pattern. I think it's hands tooth you call it. Yeah, I really love it. It's good for uh, sweater project. I only have one, so I can only knit one sweater at a time. Uh, so yeah, that's ongoing. And then 
I was very optimistic last week and thought I should I would have a finished object, the monkey sock. And I forgot my sock blockers uh, even today, so and I have hardly had time to knit in the lunch at work since this has been playing at my work. Uh, I have done one repeat, so not so much progress, but yeah. Hopefully I will find time to knit on this, uh, but as you probably have, uh, I have hinted enough, this is not working with me today. Yeah, it's <laughs> the juggler is sometimes hard to, uh, to wrap properly and mine sometimes doesn't want to stay up. I usually have a jacket over and then it works fine, but uh, yeah, that's a side note. Then I have been casting on really nice things. Uh, so maybe I should start uh, with the thing I have in my little mathematical bag. Uh, so this is from the Kicks and Gales uh, Etsy shop. Uh, I got it when I had the hit of the Mitlon last year and we got a coupon code and even I could get one so I got this one and in it is a pattern uh, from a new designer let's see I chose to knit it in uh, sunness so this is from my stash uh, merino wool 100% so this is uh, a decay weight so 22 stitches on 3.5 uh, it's a pale pinkish purple something in between uh, the designer uh, is uh, from Iceland her name is uh, Dagbjörg Erastotti uh, I will probably butcher the, the last name Erastotti I'm not sure how they pronounce it but I have been following in her on Instagram for a really long time and she knits such beautiful things and uh, I saw last week that she was releasing her first uh, knitting pattern and I rushed to Revelry because I thought it was really cute and there was a little problem <laughs> the pattern is in Icelandic I don't speak Icelandic I don't understand Icelandic but I figured, hey, how hard can it be? It's knitting. So yeah, I bought it and I started knitting and I had to rip it out and I tried again and I had to rip it out. Uh, I used Google Translate and some uh, like, uh, I found a web page uh, that had like uh, translations for knitting terminology uh, and yeah uh, I have Icelandic neighbors upstairs so if I get stuck I will just knock and ask them to translate but so far it has been relatively easy uh, actually some of the words are similar to English and some are similar to Swedish and Norwegian uh, and those that I couldn't understand, I could look up in the translation, like for knitting terms, because Google Translate are very, very bad at the knitting terms. So, uh, this little baby sweater is called Blair uh, Barna Pesa. <laughs> I will put your the Icelandic name. Uh, so, this is how far I have gotten. I started this like four days ago. Uh, so yeah, it's knitted front and back, and then you uh, connect them and knit in the round underneath. So I knitted the patterning on the front uh, incorrectly, so I had to rip it out. And then I understood what I was supposed to do. And then I knitted it back, and then I connected them, and I knitted like one and a half inch. And I realized that my gauge when I knit front and back, uh, which is back and forth, is not the same as when I knit in the round. 
So the uh, the pattern uh, front and back pieces uh, I knitted on a four millimeter needle, and then I had to go down to a three point two five to get the correct gauge uh, in the stocking nut below. So now I'm supposed to use, do some some stocking nut stitch, uh, and then let's do some patterning in the bottom and then sleeves. It's uh, this is supposed to be like uh, a one year size, I believe. It's really cute and I'm really proud of myself for trying out knits even though the pattern is, is, is in Icelandic. So yeah, hopefully I will have some progress to show you next time. Uh, and I really like when I'm able to knit from stash since as I talked about last time I'm I'm attending, or what do you say? I'm, yeah, me and my friends and other people around in the community, knitting community, online also, uh, have this challenge of knitting from stash. Uh, so this is old stash, and I believe the yarn, the yarn structure and the yarn and the color works really well for a baby sweater. So yeah, that's one of my new cast arms. And then I showed you last time. Sorry, I need to drink something. I had a doctor's appointment last week and I did like this uh, gastroscopy. I don't know if it's the same in English, where you have the camera, we have to swallow a camera. Uh, so I'm still a bit sore in my throat. Uh, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> my medical things are not so interesting for you. Uh, last episode, I had a crafty desire. I had several. And one I started like the day after. So this is the wonderful apple pepper uh, by Anna Bergman, uh, Tant Ultus on Instagram. You really need to follow her if you like knitting socks. She makes these amazing uh, patterned socks. Uh, she takes inspire inspiration from like everything. <laughs> it's so amazing, like retro candy boxes and. Uh, this is uh, like a Swedish uh, china uh, that unfortunately I don't believe it's available uh, otherwise I would love it so this is how far I have gotten so this is from my uh, my stash a lot section last week I showed you uh, the green and the red so they are Arvetta classic uh, I bought them to be able to use uh, some of my uh, old scrap stash, so it's supposed it's going to be red and uh, yellow apples uh, and a green heap. So I had to do some modification. Uh, I had to uh, create more stitches around since I believe it's a 68 stitch uh, circumference in the pattern. I'm not sure if it's 64 or 68 and I usually knit 68 when I knit vanilla socks. I knit 68 on 2.25 so I cast it on on 2.25 but it got, uh, I don't know if it's the Arvetta yarn or the fact that it's uh, color work. It's probably both. Uh, so I, I went up two sizes so from 2.25 to 2.75 with 68 or 64, whatever it was. Uh, but it still wasn't big enough. So I went down to 2.5, so a little smaller needles, but then I added six stitches. Uh, so I created some more spaces uh, in between the patterns, the pattern repeats. So I created six more stitches and that seems to be enough. It's tight, but it's uh, 
enough. And I think they will they will probably bloom and be a little bit bigger when I wash them. So hopefully they will fit me. <laughs> if they don't, I can give them to my mother. She has almost the same size, uh, but a little bit smaller. So, and she won't be very <laughs> so sad if they are too small for me. Uh, so yeah. And this is my Knit Pro thing. They, uh, I really, I don't know what to say. I really enjoy both sharp and blunt sock needles for different things. Uh, so when I'm knitting the monkey socks, I really like the higher higher sharp needle because it's easy to do like lace uh, yarn overs and uh, not yarn overs but knit two together in different directions, SSKs and so lace patternings and stuff. I think it's easier to have a sharp needle. Uh, but I don't know why, but I really like blunt or more blunt needles for color work, which is really weird. Uh, and I like to alternate between circular oh, magic loop uh, or DPNs. Uh, I have actually I have no preference in that case. I I believe for me it's more about uh, alternating the movement because even though I uh, I don't have any like condition like in my hands, but uh, if I knit a lot, I get pain uh, in my fingers and in the wrists and up in the arm. Classic, classic, classic. Uh, and since I'm doing some computer work at work, I need to rest uh, sometimes. And therefore I figured if I have one pair on circular needle and one pair on DPNs, and then I have some other knitting on different size needles, I get a little bit different muscle movements. Uh, so I find that I use my index finger more. I yeah, my index finger more when I'm knitting on circular needles and I use my thumbs more when I knit on DPS. <laughs> Not like scientifically, I can say, uh, but I I believe it's so. And then I have, I feel more uh, in inside my hand, in the palm, when I'm knitting on very small needles, I crunch my fingers together and I can feel it inside my palm. And when I knit on bigger needles, I can feel it uh, up in the arm, so, and that's when I'm knitting like six, eight hours a day or more. So for just knitting, uh, knitting evening, it's no problem. But if I like now, I'm going to have one week of vacation. I will stay home and knit quite a lot. So if I knit six hours in a day or more, I will probably feel it by the end of the week. So alternating and stretching is important. Uh, so yeah. My apple pepper socks, <laughs> I'm bypassing, uh, apple pepper socks are living in this lovely, lovely bag from Naughty Gnome Crafts. Uh, this is uh, a bag that I love. The Dalekarlia horses are a big reminder of home for me since I'm from the place where they are from, uh, in Dalarna, in Sweden. So. I got enabled by Jag Yarn last year, I believe, and she have, uh, she got the bag from Naughty Gnome. So I'm really pleased with with this. Now my neighbors upstairs are vacuuming, <laughs> are doing some vacuuming. Uh, so I hope you don't have the sound from upstairs. Uh, I will try to do something about it if it's too loud. Then I have one, one more <laughs> cast on since all the shiny things are lurking in my Ravelry queue and on Instagram I get so inspired. But I, I believe it's better to be inspired rather than not feeling that, like knitting. So I seize the moment and I cast on the things I like. So yeah, this pattern is not released yet, uh, but 
I have a really talented friend here uh, in my knitting group in Norway. And she very, very kindly gave me the pattern before she released it. So this is how far I have gotten. I will give you the correct info uh, later on when I have checked with her. So a baby sweater. Uh, I chose to knit it in stash yarn. So Ja, vi älskar lagerstrick. Hashtag works really well for me. Uh, I have some stash from uh, the Norwegian store Pickles. I knit a lot of their patterns and I have some of their yarns hanging around. So this is uh, a really gorgeous bluish green with uh, tweed. So this is merino. See if you can see. There, merino tweed. So it's 100% wool. Uh, it's a sport weight. Uh, so it's a greenish blue with uh, royal blue and turquoise uh, tweed speckles. So I really like the fabric. Uh, I, that I'm getting, and luckily for me, I'm spot on on the uh, on the gauge. So I'm knitting the one year size. Uh, hopefully, I can uh, send it to my little cousin uh, and have some cute pictures when it's done. This is. Uh, all I knitted yesterday. I cast on yesterday, Saturday afternoon, so I have knitted almost 15 centimeters. But yeah, this is so much fun, and this is the thing I'm knitting on the most at the moment, since all the lovely girls in my knitting uh, crew, knitting gang, <laughs> we're all knitting this. So. Yeah, I'm really inspired uh, by it. I'm just checking what the dogs are doing, but they are just playing. So yeah, really, really lovely. And I have, haven't have worked on the Lilla Winterstjärna, uh, the baby sweater I showed you last time. I haven't been knitting on it at all. Now I want to do this again. See if it wants to stay up if I do it like this. If you have knitted a doogler and have some good way to wrap it, I would love to see how you wear it. Since, as you can see, I have a problem with uh, the shawl on wrapping if I don't have a jacket. Uh, yeah, if I don't have a jacket uh, that holds it in place. Maybe it's because my shawl is uh, quite small. Uh, I'm not sure, but I really like it, so I will. I want to use it. Uh, but usually, I have like my uh, my leather jacket. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, uh, since I'm on this knitting uh, from stash challenge, uh, I haven't any stash that is new yarn. I will hopefully have it by next week since I I have knitted more than three projects from Stash and therefore I uh, I'm able to order yarn for a uh, one new project. That's one of the rules. So I have ordered yarn for uh, uh, the Dam Jacka Elinor uh, from Ann Myre, Pinneguri. Uh, the cardigan I talked about in my last episode. So I have ordered some really lovely yarn and I got a mail, uh, I believe it was Thursday or it was it Friday, that uh, the package was sent from Sweden. So hopefully I will get it uh, during the coming week. Um, it's not so sure because there's a difference between Sweden and Norway that I'm really annoyed about. Uh, in, Nor in Norway, during Easter, we have, and I'm not sure about the terms uh, for the days, but during Easter you have uh, the first day and Friday are what we call red days, so you're off from work. It counts as uh, a weekend. Uh, so, and 
in Sweden, uh, they are not. So, and the problem is in Sweden, uh, when, when you have like a red day, it often counts as Sunday. And in Sweden, the stores, uh, like food stores and things, postal service have opened, but very, very short time. Uh, maybe like from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Like they have very short uh, opening times, but they have open. The problem in Norway is uh, Sundays, everything is closed. So uh, Thursday, Friday uh, and Sunday, Monday, they will have all the stores will be closed. And I won't get any packages. <laughs> so uh, I really hope it will get here before so i can like get it on wednesday or something uh, so that's what i'm hoping for uh, and i really badly need to go shopping food so i can like fill my fridge and my i don't know what you call it. we have like a uh, i would say walk-in closet but uh, but it's for it's for um it's a it's cold, so you can store foods and uh, stuff in there. It's dark, dark and cold. Uh, Scaffery, uh, we say. Uh, so I will usually buy all the vegetables and stuff, and fr fruits, and put it in there. Uh, yes. But <laughs> I just want to play around. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but the problem is all the other people are also like going crazy about shopping so my local food store are all out of like eggs already <laughs> so yeah and candy is really cheap for once so all the Norwegians are buying candy like crazy uh, it's a, quite a huge price difference or have been historically between uh, Sweden and Norway uh, where Norway are far more expensive so yeah, but uh, that was a big side note. What was I talking about? Yeah, I have ordered yarn. <laughs> that was the thing. Sorry. Uh, I have ordered yarn for my cardigan. So hopefully I can show you it next week. And But I have some stash things that I have gotten. Uh, I talked, I hope I talked about it last week or that uh, when I knitted the, the monkey socks I found that my high high sharp needle uh, the size was great but the length of the cable wasn't so I have ordered a new one so this is uh, a pure sock needle or lace knitting it's sharp 2.25 it's glaring 2.25 and it's uh, a one meter cable, so 100 centimeters, 40 inch apparently. So hopefully I can knit two at a time socks <laughs> on this. Uh, so maybe the Hamish uh, socks could, uh, maybe I could cast on those as well and use these. Uh, and or maybe I have a lot of sock yarn laying around waiting to cast on there are so many tempting things but maybe two socks on the needles are enough I don't know if I ever want to finish anything I should knit on the things I have cast on but maybe we'll see a new pair of socks till next time um, yeah and the other stash uh, a lot of things came a little bit out of frustration. Uh, yesterday I was uh, going around in the clothing stores looking for uh, some training clothing uh, or pants to have uh, when I go to the gym or when I'm out walking and stuff. Uh, I have had a, a huge, uh, a big pair of yoga pants that I have used quite a lot. But uh, if you have watched my podcast a long time, you know that I have a prosthetic leg. And if you don't, now you know I have a prosthetic leg. Uh, if you're wondering 
and want me to tell more about it, I'm happily doing that. So just message in my Revlon group or PM me or anything. But anyways, I have a prosthetic leg and that makes some trouble for me. Uh, one of the things is that um, I'm wearing clothes quite hard, especially pants uh, and shoes and socks, of course, but pants uh, are the most, uh, I have the most problem with. And in all the trainings, all the training clothing in the stores uh, are really, really tight uh, and very, very thin fabric. And uh, as you probably noticed, I'm not the smallest person in the world. Uh, so when I tried like the biggest size they had in the store, uh, it looks terrible. It's like squeezing in all the jiggles uh, and it doesn't feel good and it looks terrible. So I got really frustrated and realized I don't want to pay a lot of money for clothing that I will tear apart uh, in two sessions at the gym uh, and that I will be uncomfortable using. So I was mad and sad because that's what happens when I go to try clothing. Uh, so I went to my fabric store and got some thick grey uh, like rib jersey so it's a little bit thicker and a little bit more sturdy but it's still elastic uh, so i explained to her that i have some problem with wear and tear and she recommended me to try so a pair in this thick ribbing so that's what i'm going to do i have some really nice uh, I believe it's. I believe I have purple ribbing as well, so I figure I will do like a really wide uh, waistband in the purple. So pants, legs in this have pockets in purple and then purple uh, cuffs in the pants. Uh, I hope <laughs> they will be great. Uh, I'm not the best sewist in the world, but the fabric was cheaper uh, than buying ugly tights and I can make them fit me instead of trying to make me fit in clothing that I don't fit in. So yeah, out of frustration I got this and now I just need to see if I can like take measurements of my broken training pants and adjust them. Uh, or if I'm going to look around on the web to see if I can find any sewing pattern for some uh, good fitting training pants. I just want them to have like a high, a high, not high waist, but a broad, a wide, like a broad mm, waistband. Uh, so it supports like the middle part and uh, I want the legs to have a little room, but not. Um, I don't want like harem pants, and I don't want like my yoga pants. You can fit like three legs in one of the legs of the pants, so they are a little bit too big. I want something in between, yes, like training pants. So hopefully, I can manage to figure something out. I have never sewn uh, pants with pockets, but I really want to so that will probably be my easter project and while i was at my sewing and fabric store uh, they usually oh, they mostly have quilts and that kind of stuff and they had some cute pieces that i got so this would probably be a project bag so these are some cute caps and yarn balls so cute and i figured that i should line it with with this fabric i don't know what you think could it be a nice project bag i have only sewn two bags 
Uh, but I thought it was a lot of fun, so I figured I should do some more experimenting and learning. Uh, I have been looking around uh, quite a lot for uh, fabric with... Uh, I know there's a lot of people having these cute bags. Uh, my shawl is distracting me. Uh, a lot of people have had these nice bags uh, with the cute alpacas on them, but I haven't found any fabric uh, similar. This podcast is about me making, arranging my show and arranging my hair. <laughs> but uh, I have seen a lot of people having beautiful bags with uh, alpaca fabric with uh, different alpacas and hearts and stuff. I haven't been able to find anything uh, of it, so... Uh, I have a fabric in my stash that I'm uh, with bugs on it that I'm thinking about sewing a sweater bag in since uh, I only have the skeleton bag so I only have one sweater bag and I think I would like to have one that is a little bit bigger uh, and maybe I can sew one myself I'm not sure uh, but yeah, this cat fabric will probably be a sock bag. Uh, but yeah, I'm also looking forward because I'm having, uh, I'm planning a swap uh, with uh, lovely Denise, and that uh, we have a, a swap, mini swap uh, with the, the Junk Yarn Podcast, and now we're going to have a little fabric swap in between ourselves. So um, I'm hopefully going to get a nice package with some park fabric. So that will be exciting. Um, I just got my paycheck, so I will buy some really nice fabric for that, uh, for her package. And yeah, I really think it's fun with all this um, sewing things. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to sew some needle cozies as well. Uh, but yeah, we will see how much time I will get for it. This is hopefully the last time I will have to arrange this before I'm done. Um, so yeah, sewing is very interesting and tempting. So maybe I will uh, be able to try it out uh, some more. Wonderful Denise also sent me a lot of tips on how to make the zippers. Uh, yeah, the zippers turn out better because I didn't show you the bag. The bag that I have my my friend's design in is one that I sewed myself. I showed it two episodes ago. So different animals uh, playing around in the winter winterland. And I had some fabric with hearts on it. And I had a soft interfacing so it's You'll be, you're able to squinch it together in a bigger bag. I managed to make a strap and I got uh, the zipper in, but it didn't turn out so evenly in the end. So she sent me a really nice uh, tips on how to, yeah, <laughs> on how to sew it uh, with some fabric that you make like a fabric sandwich and then the f end of the zipper will turn out more neatly. So thank you Denise, I will definitely try that when I sew up my next bag. So yeah, uh, my dogs are having <laughs> some cute cuddles. Yeah. As you can understand, this is really annoying for me, and I bet it's really annoying for you when I'm talking about it all the time. So, um, they are so cute. Let me show you. <laughs> they are playing. Ooh. 
sorry if you get seasick. Uh, we are playing and having some cozy time at the same time. They are really weird. Uh, but yeah, that's all the projects uh, going on. Uh, yeah. And I do want to mention some uh, podcasts that I have been watching. Uh, I have been for a long, long time not being able to watch podcasts since I have been really stressful at work and uh, all my appointments at the doctor and all the things. So, but there are some lovely podcasts I want to mention. I figure I should be better at mentioning podcasts I like. Um, so, if you have unfortunately missed any of these, you should check them out. Uh, so, I have four new podcast or not new podcast they have been podcasting for a while some of them at least but that are really nice and that i haven't mentioned uh, at all so the first one is like sydney it's uh, a really, really nice mother and daughter team uh, i really like how they interact with each other and they have really nice projects uh, so yeah uh, they are really fun. I uh, just watched this morning when they tried the uh, Vegemite. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Legacy Knits. And then you have uh, Katie, uh, who has the Inside Number 23 podcast. Uh, she is uh, really, really lovely, and she has a pug. Uh, Rowley, he is so cute. I recognize a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of the things that my pug is doing, so I really enjoy when he is on the podcast. Uh, she also have a, a Harry Potter knit along, which I really want to join, but uh, I have quite a lot of projects, so we'll see if I will be able to cast on any project. I have been longing to make the Snape stockings, so maybe. They will be a cast on during my Easter, uh, but she's really nice. Uh, so inside number 23, and she do lives in uh, number 23 as the house number. So yeah, and then uh, there's a lovely Canadian podcast called Sticks Plus Twine, uh, and it's really really interesting uh, when he shows. He talks a lot in his podcast about uh, like the male perspective, and that's, I really, really enjoy uh, to have some new influences and thoughts about it. Uh, I have seen, I have been thinking a little bit about it since I'm trying to knit for my fiance, and now I have a baby cousin, which is a boy. Uh, so I see that it's a lot easier because I have a little cousin that is a girl as well. She's a little bit older. Uh, so knitting for her is so easy to find patterns and when I'm going to knit for the boy it's really hard and finding patterns that my boyfriend like is not that easy. So it's really interesting when uh, in the podcast when he talks about these things and he knits really really gorgeous projects. Uh, there's uh, he's having a exploration station knit along, I believe. Really lovely uh, colors on on the shawl. So sticks plus twine. And then the last one uh, is really really adorable. Uh, it's Charlotte and Gus. So uh, the podcaster is Charlotte, and her co-host is her cat uh, called Gus. They are uh, really, really cute. And they are quite a new podcast. Uh, so they had a really uh, nice episode uh, that I watched some days ago. And yeah. Really cute and really beautiful, like neutral uh, colors on her objects, her projects, and it's uh, really nice. Uh, yeah, nice patterns and so. And Gus is really, really cute. I really, I really wish I had a cat. Uh, I have been having cats before, and my oldest cat lived with my parents. There's only one left. They were. We had three cats when I grew up. Uh, only one is uh, living now. 
but I really, really miss having uh, having a cat. So it's really nice to see uh, some other people <laughs> who have cats. Uh, so yeah, uh, Charlotte and Gus. So that's four of the podcasts that I have been watching a little bit more lately. And the pug is so cute. He's so cute. <laughs> so yeah, I believe that is all for today. Uh, I believe the pug wants his lunch. <laughs> uh, so this will be this for now. And I really hope you will have a really nice week. Uh, and you will be able to squeeze in a lot of knitting. Thank you a lot for spending some of your time with me and I hopefully will be back next week. Bye!